Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,129. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, 1,129 to 1,132, click on the link below the video. Oh, we have another great video about aging of accounts receivable reports. Now, back in Excel Magic Trick 128, we did an array formula to create our reports. But in 129, 130, and 131, we're going to do a couple of other methods. This one is awesome. We're actually going to use slicers and the Excel table feature. All right. Now I'm going to scroll in a little bit. I've already created a little table off to the side with the lower and upper days. Here's our data set, customer, invoice amount, invoice date, and due date. We're going to have to add an extra column, just like we did in our last video, to figure out how many days late each invoice is. Then we're going to add a second helper column that will be our slicer that will have the reporting category. So I'm going to start over here first. In this range, I want to create a formula that will be a label. All right. I always add the green there just to help me see that this is where the formula goes. We're going to do a text formula. I'm going to say equals, click on 1, the join symbol, shift 7, and then in double quotes, space, greater than or equal to, days late, space, less than or equal to, end space. So all of that right now is just text in the middle. And I'm going to join that to the upper date. When I Control Enter, double click between I and J, double click and send it down. Those will be our labels. Double click there. So days late, greater than or equal to 31, less than or equal to 60. Now we want to come over here. This will be days late. Control Enter, Control B. Down arrow equals one cell to my left, subtracting two cells to my left. That's the later date minus the earlier date. Control Enter. I'm going to add some green and a border there. Double click and send it down. All right, now double click. I actually want to add a second of the fourth column to this. Actually, I'm going to add the first column. What I'd like to do is I want these labels over here. Now, if I want these labels in this sixth column here. I could build an if and ask if this is between two, uh, the upper and lower, but that would be a huge if with lots of ands. And I'd like to instead add a first lookup column here and simply do a lookup that will retrieve the right report category. So this would be lookup 1 for lookup first column, Control B, Enter. And this will simply be, hey, whatever the lower is, whoops, equals the lower. Double click and send it down. So exactly the way VLOOKUP works, if we're going to look this date up, it'll find 1 or greater all the way up to 31, but not including 31. That will be our reporting category. Equals, I'm just going to steal that text right there, reporting category, Control B. Double click. I'm going to cheat, copy this over just so I get the formatting. Equals V lookup. I'm looking up the actual days late, comma, within this table. First and second column is all we need. F4, comma, 2, because the second column in the table has the thing we want to go and get and retrieve and bring back to the cell. The last range lookup is exact match for either false or zero or the default which is approximate lookup, which is what we're doing. Control Enter. Approximate lookup just means it'll look this up and race until it finds the first bigger one. For example, 46, it would bump into 61 and know to stop at the category above. If it, in the case of 107, it keeps going and it can't find anything bigger, it takes the last one. Double click and send it down. Double click. All right, so now we have our table. Control asterisk on the number pad to highlight the whole table. And I'm going to add some borders there. Now I want to convert this to a table. Control T, my table has headers. Click OK. Now notice this message. I forgot that tables do this. Formulas and the headers will now be removed and converted to static text. Sure, that's OK. okay. Click Yes. In essence, it took that formula. I just didn't want to retype it or copy it. So that's why I did that formula. 
All right, you know, now looking at this, I don't think I like that green here. I'm going to highlight Control Shift down. Now I'll right click and point on the mini toolbar to No Fill, Control Home. All right, so now we want a slicer. Well, if you have Excel 2003, we can go to Design and Insert Slicer. It's going to ask us which one we want. We want Report Category, click OK. Now we can do some formatting to this. Change the size, come up here, look around, find some colors we might like. Click off to this, let's drag this off to the side. And now watch this. Actually, before we do this, this report needs to be sorted with the biggest days late on top. So I'm going to click the drop down and say sort largest to smallest. But now when I apply a slicer, which is just a filter, boom, instantly I get all of the records I want. Now this is on a table, right? And so I'd like to do page setup. So no matter which filter I select, notice over here that probably wasn't a very good place to uh, put our table. I'm going to come over here, unfilter, come and click one cell, control asterisk, and I'm going to click and drag the edge. And I'm going to drag down right to there. I'm going to move this up. And actually, I probably committed one of the cardinal sins of Excel tables. I forgot to name it. So design, and then up here, table, or Alt-JTA. And I'm going to name it. See, it's highlighted up here. Aging table, and Enter. It, that's more important if you have formulas you're using, but it's always a good idea to name your tables. All right, so now we want to do page setup. Control P is beautiful since 2010. It combines the options for printing and print preview. Now, I can already see that's not going to work, right? It looks like a couple things. It's got some junk over there. And I would like the field names to be repeated. So escape, page layout. I'm going to use this dialog box right here or the keyboard Alt PSP. All right, so we want portrait. And here's a trick. When we don't know how big the table is going to be, I'm going to say fit to one page wide by nothing, delete, empty, and it will automatically always get the right number of pages, tab. Go over to margins. I'm going to center it horizontally. Header or footer, let's do a built-in footer. Notice it puts page one of one here. I want to go up and amend this. So in the custom footer, now I can type aging report, tab, tab. And I'm going to put a date here. All right, so that's the code. That's static text we typed in. I hope I spelled it right. There is some code that will dynamically update. So when we have one page, it'll say one of one. But when it has three pages, it'll say one of three, two of three. And that date will always be today's date. Click OK. Very important, I want to come over to Sheet, Print Area. Click here, Control Shift, right arrow, down arrow. Click OK. Oh, you know, Alt PSP. Forgot, very important sheet. Yes, we want to isolate the print area so this doesn't print out. But we need to repeat these headers at the top. So right here, I click on row 7, row 7. Now I click OK. Control P to check it out. Looks like it's got the headers, page 1 of 5. When I click the next, it says page 2 of 5. And it's got our headers. It's looking good. Now let's try our filter. One Between 1 and 30 days, Control P. Check that out, page 1 of 1. Escape, we changed it to 31 to 60, Control P. Page 1 of 3, 2 of 3, 3 of 3. It is looking good. Click on the last one, Control P. I love it. Aging of accounts receivable reports with the table feature slicer and a bunch of cool formulas. All right, we'll see you next video.